So the vaccine distribution uh, policies have been changing over time. The state's making adjustments and the state has just put in, into place a, a requirement that 40% of the doses get distributed to zip codes that have uh, have lower scores on the on the uh, health, health equity um, scale. So um, healthy places index, which is being used to target uh, communities that may be more vulnerable. So the state's decided to try to tilt the balance of doses to ensure that 40% go to those new zip codes. And my question is, does the vaccine make it safer to live in a community that still has high case rates? Yes, so the, the, the having a higher degree of vaccination does make it safer to be in communities that have high rates. Um, it's a little bit of the chicken and the egg business here. So. Uh, we are in fact going to allocate higher doses to those those zip codes, those geographic areas. Um, if we're successful at getting the vaccines rolled out there, then you're going to have an impact on lowering the uh, the, the uh, case positivity rates in those areas too. So uh, it is a, a matter of getting the vaccines out to places where you're seeing more transmission. That does make sense. Um, in the same way that we also think about rolling out vaccines and preventive measures to people that perhaps are more vulnerable, that are more likely to suffer the ill effects of being infected. So as you know, at the beginning of the, of the pandemic, uh, we did target uh, people over 75 years of age because they were the most vulnerable. So that wasn't really based on anything other than age. But as we've vaccinated that, that group, and now we're doing the 65 year olds and older, now we're looking at some other ways of allocating vaccines that are really based on curbing the transmission through communities. And that's a little bit different than just focusing on the vulnerability as the major uh, reason for, for doing more vaccination. And from your knowledge, how will adding this vaccine requirement affect Sacramento County when it comes to changing tiers? I don't know how the change is gonna actually affect our county. We have, uh, we actually have a number of zip codes that fall into their their index. And so I don't know that there'll be any net change in the total number of doses that will come to Sacramento County because of this change. It's just that the doses will be prioritized for some of those zip codes. Um, but that's hard to say right now. The vaccine rollout, the vaccine distribution has been what I would call somewhat chaotic. And there have been different uh, sources going from the federal government directly to providers like CVS that were doing the, the uh, congregate living facilities for the aged folks. Uh, that was not even in, under the control of the state. And then the state got allocation of doses. So it's just been very, very chaotic for the last couple months for the rollout. Um, we know that Blue Shield is stepping in now under contract with the state to sort of get a better handle on doing vaccine distribution. Um, but in terms of the total number of doses being shipped out to each of the counties, um, I don't expect this is going to have a big impact. But where those doses actually get delivered to which, which providers to deliver the doses, that will probably change as a result of this policy change. I just want to make sure I haven't heard from my reporting. Due to us having so many uh, zip codes with disadvantaged areas who need this vaccine before we can even use the vaccine as a cure requirement, that's why it may not affect Sacramento County. We may stay, stay where we're at. Yes, I think because we do have a higher number of these uh, areas than uh, some of the surrounding counties, El Dorado and Placer counties have no zip codes that fit into this category. So clearly Sacramento is likely to at least be able to continue getting the doses we have, if not perhaps more, I don't know. But that's be the reason that many of us don't know is that, again, it's not clear what the true vaccine distribution plan is. It's kind of right now a combination of different channels. And, um, and I, we don't have a handle on having one single uh, arbiter of where things are going, but the state has a very large control. So I think it's likely that Sacramento will, will not see a decrease at all. In fact, it may be a, a, a slight increase. And if we're going at the pace that we are now with the allocation that we are being given, how soon do you think we'll be able to incorporate vaccine rates into um, tier changing in eligibility? Well, we, we don't yet have a clear plan of how increased vaccination rates are going to trip a, a signal to change tiers. And in fact, the tiering criteria will have to change. It only makes sense to change as we're seeing more vaccination. But I haven't seen the algorithm defined yet from the state about how they're gonna actually do that. I know that there's a, 
discussion right now of having a certain vaccination percentage that you reach that would then allow a, a, a county to go into a, a lower tier. But um, that's going to have to change over time as we get more and more people vaccinated. In fact, that's the interesting thing about this pandemic. It's very dynamic. Not only do we have to deal with surges where you saw more infection, but now we've got something that prevents it. And again, the effects of the vaccinations, uh, we would expect to see these effects happen now, it's just starting to happen right now. Remember the healthcare workers got vaccinated in December. So of course, healthcare facilities have remained open and functioning because the healthcare workers are not getting sick, they're not out of work. So that's been a very big impact. But now that we're seeing the general rollout to the population, you know, we would expect to see less and less uh, transmission of the virus. But remember, Right now, we're about 23% of the California population that's vaccinated. And to get to levels of herd immunity that we think we need, we need to be upwards around 80%. So overall, to end the pandemic, we're not anywhere close to that yet. But the rate of vaccine rollout is going quite well now. We've finally got our stride, and we're seeing more and more doses. And with the third vaccine now being available, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, we have an opportunity to, to really very effectively vaccinate even more people, and it's a single-dose vaccination. So that's going to be a game changer also. And as we see more and more vaccine rates uh, going up, we're going to see uh, some of the tiering and the restrictions being lifted. But the algorithm for doing that has yet to be fully defined. And you kind of answered my next question about tier eligibility always changing. Why is that? There's a lot of people who are starting to not trust the science um, because they feel like they just don't know what the requirements are going to be next week or next month. Yeah, so, so it's like everything else. As we develop more evidence, we change our thinking. You remember we told people not to wear masks nine months ago and the evidence that emerged over that uh, the period of time between certainly indicates that masking uh, is a very effective safety prevention measure, right? So we, we do update our science, we update the evidence base as we're moving along. Clearly, we had anticipated that we would have vaccination 10 months ago, right? But there were no vaccines on the horizon then. And so as we've rolled out this new preventive measure, the most effective preventive measure, we have to be thinking about updating the criteria by which we change our tiering when we ask people to, to do these public health preventive measures. And of course, you saw yesterday the CDC issued guidelines for people that have already successfully been fully vaccinated to, to lift some of the preventive measures like the masking around family members. Uh, they've, they've actually liberalized that. So we're gonna see more and more of that. So things change because the situation changes and uh, we roll with the punches. We use the best available evidence that we've amassed up to this point in time to make policy decisions. And of course, they're going to then have an impact, which requires us to look at the science again uh, further downstream and update our policies. So that's not an un atypical type situation. And my last question, is there anything else that you want to add that you believe people need to know about vaccines being added to the tier eligibility requirement? Uh, no, I think the thing that I would add is that, of course, vaccine rollout is very important. We should see lower transmission, but we don't want people to have a false sense of security. Okay, that's very important. And so even though we know vaccines are effective, at their very best, probably one person out of 20 or 5% are not going to be protected from the vaccinations. We know that the efficacy rates for the Pfizer vaccine were 95% and there were 94.6% for the Moderna vaccine. That means some individuals will not be protected from the vaccine. And because you don't know who they are, they don't have a label on their head, they are technically capable of transmitting the virus to other people. So we ask people to really maintain all of the safety standards we do, mask up in public, keep your distance, do hand hygiene, you know, all of those measures are still in place now until we get to a point where we have sufficient population herd immunity. And we really can't let our guard down until we get to that point because of that issue of some people not being protected. And also we don't have the evidence in yet about whether if you're fully vaccinated, you can't possibly transmit to somebody else. You could be protected yourself from getting sick, but you might still be able to harbor the virus and spread it to somebody else. We're trying to look at that right now and figure out whether that's true. Other vaccines do protect against transmission to other people, but we don't have that evidence yet sewed up for COVID-19. So we're, we're trying to figure that out. And that's why we have to maintain all the public health measures, at least until we get out to probably the end of the year when we get to a hopefully a level of, of sufficient population herd immunity.